Environment design is one of my favorite aspects of not just pixel art, but art in general. And in the pixel art space, where the majority of the community is developing games, environment design is one of the barriers all of us have to cross, one way or another. So today, I'm going to show you how I go about drawing the most important element to any environment. Trees. Like I say every video, use my tips at your own discretion. I'm not a master and there is no single way to draw something, especially natural things like trees, because there aren't strict rules for how something looks in nature, so why should there be when we draw it? With tutorial videos, you have to decide what information you want to accommodate, and what information you want to disregard. Let's talk about style. Before you draw any environment, it's a good idea to decide on an overarching style. With trees, you can draw anywhere on the scale from realism to simplified, and even abstraction. Obviously, photorealism isn't possible in pixel art, but you can get quite close. If you're making a game, ensure your chosen style is consistent across the entire environment. Part 2. Realism and Semi-Realism Before you start drawing a tree, know what type of tree it is in your head. If it's a pine tree, the shape will differ to an oak. Honestly, knowing the type of tree is not that important, but it will help you to know the general shape of the leaves, and what texture to make the trunk. And use a reference or two, it'll help you if you feel stuck. But other than that, there aren't too many rules for trees. It's not like drawing a human where every aspect of the anatomy can be technically scrutinized. Environments are much more forgiving. The easiest place to start is where the trunk of the tree meets the ground. From here on up, we'll split the trunk into thinner and thinner branches until we're satisfied with the complexity of the tree. When you create splits, try to place them in unconventional spots. You want your tree to look as sporadic and chaotic as possible, to avoid that cookie cutter style oak tree we're so used to. Put the first split really far down, or really high up. Or maybe have a branch that swings out really far to the left. Now, we don't just want a 2D structure, our tree needs to have three-dimensional shape. The best way to visualize this is to think of the trunk as a bundle of tubes, all with various thicknesses. These pipes or tubes will stretch down into the ground around the root structure, and upwards they'll separate off for the branches. So when you're sketching the trunk of your tree, keep these tubes in mind and use sketched ring shapes to depict the 3D form of the branches. These rings will help us later when we're adding bark or texture. Remember, the branches don't have to be perfectly cylindrical either. Make some fun shapes with your rings. Now you have a solid frame for your trunk, knowing where to place the leaves will be no problem. Speaking of leaves, we should probably add some. There are lots of ways you can draw leaves. For example, you can draw every leaf or you can abstract them into simple colors. No matter which method you choose, you should always start by blocking in the basic shapes and the silhouette of your tree's leaves. Pick a direction for your line source and create some 3D blobs. The first leaf method is to draw every single leaf with detail. The color of each leaf should match the blob color below it, and a couple shades higher or lower can be used for the outlines and highlights of each leaf. This method will make your tree hyper detailed, but possibly distracting if in a game. So use with caution and decide when applicable. The second method is to still approximate individual leaves, just not all of them. You can depict leaf shapes along the outline of the tree, between the borders of your main shades, and scattered throughout. The third method is a popular technique employed by many pixel artists. Instead of drawing individual leaves, use a 4-5 to five pixel round brush to create circle patterns that give the impression of foliage. You can achieve bark many different ways, but the one way I like to do bark is by creating small rectangles that follow the contours of the trunk outlines we created. Those rings are coming in handy now. On the side of the trunk that faces the light source, use a lighter brown than on the shadow side. You can add some anti-aliasing around the place and darken up occasional cracks if you like. Keep in mind that as you get closer to the leaves, the bark will likely be in shadow. And remember, variation is key with bark. Each piece of bark should look different from its neighbor. Adding some features to your tree like knots, spurls, or hollows can help sell that realism. But realism isn't the only goal with every artwork. That's why stylization is important. Part 3. Stylization To make a stylized tree, we'll need to simplify its complexity and not only highlight but distort key features. Notable features of the tree should be taken to the extreme. For example, if it has a bend in the trunk, accentuate that bend and make it a feature. But when you put bends in the trunk, make sure to keep the center of gravity roughly balanced. When we pick a style for our tree and environments, it's common to make the leaves a primitive shape like a sphere, a cube, a cone, or a pyramid. A good example of this would be the game Hyperlight Drifter, where cubic trees match stylized square rocks. One of the biggest takeaways is no matter what you do, pixel art will always be stylized to some extent. With small canvas sizes, it's inevitable that your artwork won't be photoreal, but you don't always have to aim for the most realistic looking pixel art. As long as you have a unique style and a set of rules which bind your visuals together, and as long as you remain consistent with what you make, whether it be consistency within the composition of a standalone artwork, or consistency for all aspects of a game you're creating, 
your trees will look great. Thanks for watching and I hope it was helpful. Even if you have your own method for creating trees or you don't agree with some of my ideas, at the very least you've seen how someone else does it. 